Willie Francis was a 17-year-old African-American sentenced to death by the electric chair by the state of Louisiana for the murder of Andrew Thomas, a drugstore owner in St. Martinsville who had once employed him. His case is notable as being the first known incident of a failed execution in the United States. Francis was born on January the 12th, 1929 in St. Martinsville. He was the youngest of the 13 children. His father was a farm laborer earning just $9 a week. Francis received an education in Louisiana's poorly segregated school. He also had a speech impediment described as being very bad. Andrew Thomas was shot five times outside his home for the murder remained unsolved for nine months until August 1945 when Francis, 15 at the time, went to visit his sister in Port Arthur. When Francis was arrested in an unrelated drug charge, the police later claimed that in his pocket was Andrew Thomas's wallet. Francis named several others in the connection to the murder, but the police were never able to trace these individuals. A short time later, Francis directed the police to where he had disposed of the weapon used to carry out the murder. Despite two separate written confessions, Francis pleaded not guilty. On May the 3rd, 1946, the electric chair had failed to kill William Francis. Witnesses reported hearing the teenager scream from behind the leather hood. The electric chair had been improperly set up by Captain M. V. Foster and an inmate named Vincent Venzia, who worked as the assistant electrician within the Louisiana prison system, and at the time, the individuals were drunk. When Francis was removed from the chair, it was recorded that one of the executioner, Captain Foster, yelled at him, I missed you this time, but I'll get you next week, even if I have to use an iron bar. After the botched execution, a young lawyer, Bertrand de Blanc, who was the best friend of the victim, decided to take up Francis' case. De Blanc initially did not think the boy might be innocent, but rather felt that it was inhumane to make a man go twice to the chair. But looking into the case, he began to have different views on the teenager. As he gathered that Francis was not initially arrested for the murder of Thomas, but rather miles away from where the murder had took place for false drug charges was unrelated reasons. With no legal representation at any point during the interrogations, they report reportedly pressed him in within minutes. They had signed a confession from Francis for the murder and a second confession the following day. Reporters said the gun used in the murder wasn't examined for fingerprints while the bullets found in Thomas's bodies was not matched with those of the gun. What is more that the gun and the bullets were lost before the trial while they transit to the FBI analysis. On the night of Thomas's murder, one of his neighbors also claimed to have seen a car headlights in Thomas's driveway. Francis couldn't drive but none of these factors were taken into considerations when he was sentenced to death. De Blanc then took the case to the Supreme Court with the help of J. Scally Wright, a lawyer from Washington. But things didn't go as Francis was ruled against a day after the 18th birthday. Not giving up, de Blanc made moves to get Francis a proper trial after he found out that one of the executioners had been drunk. However, Francis was denied a new trial. De Blanc later told Francis that he would take the case to the Supreme Court again, but the boy asked him not to as he didn't want the stress, saying, I'm ready to die. Subsequently, William Francis was executed again at 12 past 5 on May the 9th, 1947.